parallel and perpendicular lines. Let's go ahead and start with the warm-up. We're going to solve some equations. This first one says that x plus 2x plus 3x equals 180. Well, x is the same as 1x. So I have 1x plus 2x plus 3x. That's 6x equals 180. Divide both sides by 6. x equals 30. Number 2, we have the quantity w plus 23 plus the quantity 4w plus 7 equals 180. Combining like terms, w and 4w is 5w. 23 and 7 is 30. That equals 180. So I have 5w plus 30 equals 180. Subtract 30 on both sides. 5w equals 150. And then when we divide by 5, w equals 30. So number 1, I have x equals 30. And number 2, I have w equals 30. Now number 3, we're going to write an equation and then solve it. The sum of the measure of angle 1 and twice its complement is 146. Well, sum is addition, and complement means that the two angles add to equal 108, I'm sorry, add to equal 90 degrees. Supplementary is 180 degrees. All right, so if the measure of angle 1 is x, the complement is going to be 90 minus x because I want to be able to add those two numbers together to get 90. The equation I can come up with then is x plus twice its complement, so plus 2 times the quantity 90 minus x equals 146. This is x plus 180 minus 2x equals 146. Negative x plus 180 equals 146. Negative x equals 180 taken from 146 gives me negative 34. So that means that x equals 34. Number four, the measures of two supplementary angles are in the ratio of 2 to 3. Find their measures. To do this, I need to know that supplementary is adding to get 180. Ratios of 2 to 3. So one is twice a value and the other one is three times that same value. I can set up the equation 2x plus 3x equals 180, or 5x equals 180. When I take 180 and divide by 5, I end up with 36. Now it's asking me for the measure of the two angles. Since x is 36, plugging that in, I get 2 times 36, which is 72 degrees, and 3 times 36, which is 100 and 8 degrees. So the measures of my two angles are 72 and 108. The objectives for this lesson are to identify angles formed by two lines and a transversal and to prove and use properties of parallel lines. Let's start by talking about what a transversal is. If you have two lines crossing somewhere, or two lines somewhere, and you put a third line in that crosses those two lines in two distinct points, that's a transversal. The whole distinct point thing means that if I've got two lines, I can't say that third line goes through the same point where those two lines cross. So transversal is a line intersecting two different lines in two different spots. Alternate interior angles. Alternate, opposite sides of the transversal. Interior means between those two lines that are being crossed by that transversal. So in my picture down here, this figure at the bottom, I've got these two lines intersected by a transversal. Alternate interior are going to be these angles that are on opposite sides of that transversal in between those two lines. And they're also going to be these two angles right here. So I've got one with two. Those are alternate interior angles and three and four. Those are alternate interior angles. Opposite sides of the transversal or alternate sides of the transversal and interior, inside those lines that are crossed by that transversal. Same side interior angles mean that those angles are on the same side of the transversal. Interior, once again, in between those two lines. So, from my picture here, one and two, those are same side interior angles. 3 and 4, those are same side interior angles because they're on the same side of the transversal 
in between the two lines that are crossed by that transversal. And last but not least, we have corresponding angles. Corresponding angles mean they're in the same location. So, this angle right here, angle 1 is in the upper left, so is angle 2. It's in the upper left. Angle 3, upper right. Angle 4, upper right. Angle 5, lower right. Angle 6, lower right. So basically, if you can take these angles and slide them over, it's whatever's in the same position. Those are corresponding angles. All right. If you have parallel lines cut by a transversal, then corresponding angles are congruent. That means that those two angles are congruent, those two angles are congruent, those two angles are congruent, and these last two angles are congruent. So you can actually take these four angles, slide them over, and they should all be congruent. All corresponding angles are congruent when you have a transversal intersecting two parallel lines. All right, same idea, parallel lines cut by a transversal, same side interior angles are supplementary. That means these two angles add to equal 180, and these two angles add to equal 180 degrees. Same side interior angles are supplementary when you have a transversal intersecting two parallel lines. All right, one more. Parallel lines cut by a transversal. Alternate interior angles are congruent. These two angles congruent. They're alternate sides of the transversal, interior, because they're inside those two parallel lines. Didn't mark them parallel this time. This other set of parallel lines, I'm sorry, other set of alternate interior ang angles are also congruent. When you have parallel lines cut by a transversal, alternate interior angles are congruent. All right, let's practice naming some of these. This first one, we're going to name alternate interior and same side interior. Alternate interior, I'm going to abbreviate A. I, A. Alternate interior angles. The alternate interior angles are opposite sides of the transversal in between the lines that are intersected. And I have angle 1 and angle 2. I also have a pair, angle 4 and angle 3. So I have two pairs of alternate interior angles. Same side interior angles. I'll just call that SSI, same side interior, same side interior, I've got 1 and 4, and I also have angle 3 and 2. Okay, this next one, alternate interior angles, once again, angle 1 and angle 2, opposite sides of the transversal in between those two lines. My other pair, angle 4 and angle 3, same side interior are going to be angle 1 and angle 4 because they're on the same side of the transversal in between those two lines that are cut by the transversal, and angle 3 and angle 2. Now on this last figure, I have more angles that are labeled. The angles 5, 6, 7, and 8 are what we call exterior angles because they're on the outside or the exterior of those two lines cut by the transversal. Labeling my alternate interior angles, so the pairs of alternate interior angles, I have angle 1 and angle 2, angle 4, and angle 3, and then the same side interior, I've got angle 1 and angle 4 and angle 3 with angle 2. Okay, here I've got a diagram of the Lafayette Regional Airport. These black segments are the runways, the gray areas are taxis. We are supposed to classify angle 1 and angle 2 as alternate interior, same side interior, or corresponding angles. Okay, my angle 2, there's a little arrow, this is angle 2 and this is angle 1. Notice that angle 1 is on the outside, it's an exterior angle, 
So right away I know that it's not going to be alternate interior or same side interior with any of the other angles since it's on the outside. And now I need to just check to see if they're corresponding angles. I can see that angle one, I'll put my one back in there, is on the lower right. Angle two is also the lower right. So these two angles are corresponding angles. All right, let's go ahead and do an activity to show how all these angles are related. All you need is a piece of paper and then either a piece of tracing paper or a transparency. I just used uh, one of those pocket sleeves you can get anything that you can actually see through so that you can trace onto it. And what you need to do is make parallel lines. To make my parallel lines, I just stuck a ruler on my paper and I drew a line on both sides of the ruler. And then cut it by a transversal. Label all eight of your angles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can label them any way you want. I just want to make sure that I label